Hello Targ, our friends. Hey everybody, it's Jason Blaha here and once again it's time for another Orc Mode workout and today was Max Effort Press Day. But a quick reminder, those of you who watch these could press like down below, it would be greatly appreciated. A lot to talk about uh, and sorry this is coming up late today. I got really busy with client stuff, a lot of messages back and forth. My workout took forever to finish all the accessory work, but I did get it all done and then I had to work with a client on some stuff before I could voice over. So this is coming up really late in the day quite a bit later than I usually do. Um, you guys will notice, doing really heavy chains today. Heavier chains than I usually do, uh, because again, my lockout strength is what limits my benching, particularly the close grip benching. So again, chains are a good way to see where I'm at without overstressing my shoulders on maxes. One of the reasons I like to do it, particularly because my, my limit strength is always the lockout. It's always the lockout. You guys will notice I'm arching today. Why? It's a little easier on my shoulders. You know, uh, easier on the shoulders, and I'll probably get some something out of it later, especially if I ever mess with some wider grip. Close grip, it doesn't take much out of my range of motion. My range of motion is long. I have really long arms. It's why I'm not amazing at the bench. Okay. So, it helps me with the deadlift, so I'll, I'll take it. You know, by the same token, a lot of people who are like, oh, I outbench you, and then I see their deadlift. And it's like, okay, bro, that's cute. So, over to the benching, though. <laughs> 265 for the final one with my 74 pounds of chains so we know the lockout strength is is kind of coming back up to where it was we're getting there I keep working on it and again these are training matches i'm not trying to take these all out and it's a little slow on the lockout because of all those chains it's a little bit slow it wasn't super grindy so again we're doing and people need to remember these are training matches i had someone say that on the floor press they're like why'd your floor press go down like well how do you know Number one, it wasn't a max. Number two, it's with the axle bar, which is way harder. So I'm not really sure, you know, where someone gets that. These are not intended to be true wonder at maxes. They're, they're supposed to be above 90% of a max. So if your max is 500, above 90% is anything over 450, right? Make sense? Yeah, anything over 270 if your max is 300. So I went up five pounds, so I did this the other day and I hit 300. Uh, so I went ahead and just did the same rotation, bumped it five pounds. So just went up to 305 for the peak set. And my triceps lit up on it. And now maybe it could have been because I did that heavy chain bench first, but man, I noticed a lot of tricep. And I get a lot of pec activation on these floor presses too. And what's nice is that I feel a lot less shoulder, which is good. That's that's one of the things I want. Uh, the close grip benching and all the hang pulls and stuff will, will build my shoulders up. I don't need all my chest pressing to destroy my shoulders. It's just not necessary. And in fact, I'm gonna if I continue to arch more, it's a little it uses a little less delt anyways. It'll be more pec and more tricep. So that one felt definitely harder. Uh, we were getting close to a true max with that 305 on the axle bar floor press. And I'm gonna work with this axle bar a lot. Even if that means going over to chains and stuff for the for the floor pressing, that's what I'll do. Because I feel like I need extra forearm development and I need just that extra instability of dealing with that bar. It's just awkward to deal with. It still hits my pecs super hard, super hard. Um, axle bars in general tend to just feel more shoulder friendly on, on any exercise on top of it. So, uh, again, worth doing. Plus, it axle bars tend to, again, a lot of lifters feel like they hit their triceps harder. They definitely hit forearms harder. So, I went ahead and bumped the close grip weight. These were tough. These are tough today. So, this lets me know kind of where my, my max strength is as we rebuild, I'll take all this back up. Um, so, we did 235, all paused. Now, keep in mind, people who've seen me do more than this in the past, for 10, those were touch and go with one pause at the end. These are all paused. I'm trying to pause every rep. The third set, I had to stop at nine. I felt like on the ninth rep, I didn't have another rep. But I got an extra rep in on the floor press. So, you know, it's it's good. But yeah, so we went up the two and a half. And again, I'm arching, practicing arching a little bit. And again, it's not like this is a massive arch. It's not like I have, again, a three inch range of motion. So I'm not doing a crazy, crazy arch. I should probably eventually work on a crazy arch. 
it would probably let me wide grip bench and be good at it. Especially if I keep my triceps growing, 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 and keep hammering them. I might be able to. So we're going to keep doing all this close grip work, all this tricep work. I'm going to work on my arch, um, keep my low back healthy, and I'll mess with later seeing if I can set up a really big arch. And keep working my lockout strength. Because here's how that works. If you set up a big arch and you go real wide grip, it is really lockout. It is a lockout movement. And that's one reason some of these guys bench so much weight. Now, that's not everyone. There's some guys who hit some brutally strong, crazy strong six and 700 pound deadlifts who, who don't have a four inch range of motion. But that just goes to show you those guys are just that big and strong, right? Those guys are all over 300 pounds also. That's not me. Which is it's funny, you know, when I've waited on camera and stuff before, you get people who are like, oh, you're a fat 300 pound guy. Or when it's like, oh my God. No. Um, <laughs> ridiculous. I'll be competing in the 220 guys when I do meets again. That's the probably the weight class I'm going to stick with. So <laughs> I'm not going to be in the 275 or 308. Uh, but... Again, the close gripping, felt a lot of tricep again today, which is good. That's what I want, because I, I feel a lot of shoulder though on close grip. And I feel a lot of pec on these floor presses. But I'm feeling a bit more tricep, which is good, because normally I don't feel triceps on a lot of my pressing. But I'm hitting all this tricep work, um, all this band work and things right now, and hopefully that's going to keep that going. Um, so again, that my triceps will get activated more. And I suspect sometimes one of the reasons, because if we watch my movements, it's always like, well, it always looks like a tricep weakness on all my pressing. But then I don't feel my triceps. And a lot of it has to do with how you feel as a lie, right? How we feel as a lie. Because maybe my triceps were always the weak link and the other muscles are having to overwork. Maybe my bar path, and I think that's a big part of it a lot of times because of the tricep weakness that tends to be there. The bar path goes in a way that forces me to compensate with the other muscles. So we're going to continue to hammer triceps. They're going to get the lion's share of the work. It's going to be a lot of back and tricep. We're still doing chest work. So when I say that, people need to understand it doesn't mean when we're working on those weak points as extreme priorities, it doesn't mean we don't train other stuff. You guys just watched me hit two maxes, which have a training response, and I just did six sets of chest presses. They just happen to be chest presses that do make sure I use some tricep. You know, axle bar floor press, definitely tricep. Close grip bench, definitely some tricep. But we're still working the chest. My chest actually felt more lit up at the end of all this pressing, way more lit up than my triceps. I felt the triceps, though. But even as we, if we watch the lifts, we can see on these uh, the floor presses, the lockout, is where I start to slow down. Lockout was, was a little tough on the training max. And on these, on the final rep, each time I'm kind of slowing down, I'm having to fight through that last bit to lock it out. Okay, fighting the lockout each time. So we, we know that's what's going on. Now, some people would argue, but can chest be contributing to lockout weakness? Yes, it can actually. But in this case, if I get the tricep stronger, and I'm able to handle stronger lockout work in general, that will also help the chest grow for that position as well. So it really kind of is a, is a fix-all for it. So we're going to be doing a lot of tricep. And so what I decided today for my supplemental work, and I just did two sets of this basically to failure. I got like 16 to 17 reps, and I had to pause on the last couple because I knew they were getting really hard at the lockouts so that I could drive through and basically make them limit sets. But... People are always complaining, oh, your J-Gum press doesn't look like our J-Gum press. And I explained it before. I don't have to explain it every time. I'm just going to do other tricep work, and then people can shut up about it. These things all work triceps. So, axle bar, since we know, we know it hits a little more tricep because of the axle bar. It tends to just use more arms. It's, it's a, a radiant effect from squeezing the, that thick bar with a lightweight and a hundred pounds of chains. Now, keeping in mind, those chains are not going all the way down. There's a lot of chains still on that bar. And these are very high reps. It's not like I'm only doing tens here. My triceps got just as lit up as they do on a JM press. And I really felt that medial head on both sets. It got hit hard. That's what we want. 
that is what we want for pressing strength. We need them to make sure that medial head gets a lot of work. That's all of the tricep matters. And I don't want people to think that I'm saying the whole tricep doesn't matter. But when we're talking about bench lockout strength, that medial head is the most important of them. So I want to feel it. I want to make sure that I feel that head of the tricep. And that's what I got with this movement. I had to put some thought into it. What am I going to do today for the tricep variation that will do that? And this did it in two sets of it they were definitely pumped i felt that part of my tricep by the elbow of the medial head really pumped got the desired response and then we did a ridiculous amount of band press downs because i'm going to keep working all that up so i don't need as far as extra big movements in there i just need enough to get a good response because then we're getting so much blood flow and pump and connective tissue from the band press downs that that is going to have actually a training response. It, and people could argue there's a lot of junk volume with that, and there probably is. However, I'm also using it to build tendons because that's the other thing we come to. A muscle will be limited on how hard it can contract by tendon strength. So if I over hypertrophy the tendons around the elbows and all those tricep tendons, which is what this will do, we will start getting the triceps to be able to fire harder safely. Your nervous system will stop limiting them. I need my triceps to fire harder. I need them to fire harder on all my pressing, and I need to be able to keep those bars into a bar path that uses those triceps. And then we get all the active recovery. Since I'm doing all this pressing that hits the triceps, this stuff gives some amazing active recovery, amazing blood flow. And we will get some hypertrophy out of this. It's not really optimal because I'm, I'm doing 60 plus reps for 10 sets. So it, we're not really in our ideal zone there, but we know based on all the data that's going to cause a hypertrophic response. We also know that we're going to see significant tendon hypertrophy and we're going to see significant recovery benefits. So I'm going to be doing that. And so I'm just like on my, my off days, not on camera. Well, really, at the end of my leg days, I am started incorporating band extensions for my quads and for those tendons for the same reason. I'm not going to be as aggressive as I am with this, because this is a lot. This is a lot. And yes, I do them fast. I do them very fast for a reason, which we've discussed in the past. We're trying to get an over-speed eccentric. Um, and, you know, people, other people have said, well, the Alpha Destiny came with that. No, he didn't. I knew about it before he did it. He knew about it before he did it. Tons of coaches who we have both listened to have talked about it many years before either of us ever did it on camera. Okay. Uh, no one on YouTube originated that in strength training. No YouTuber did. None of us. Get, don't get it twisted, guys. Uh, but we also, of course, I supersetted that with my supine grip penlay rows. Which, man, these were challenging. My, my last set of these today, I had to rest pause the last couple reps. But I'm doing 225 for 5 by 10. And then, of course, like I said, we superset it with the band press downs. But 225 for 5 by 10 was tough. I, it's going to be a slow workup from there. I do need to get that stronger. Because our rowing should be as strong as our benching. And I just did 235 for sets of 10. So, and that's going to go up. So that's my close grip benching. And, and this is technically close grip rowing because I'm using the exact same grip width as a close grip bench. And we need to keep getting this up. But again, my biceps got hammered hard. And that's the thing with the supine grip. We use a ton of bicep. So, you know, some people are like, why aren't you doing curls right now? I mean, I could throw some in. It wouldn't be a big deal. I might eventually to see if it'll help get these rows up. Throw curls back in if I need to. Because I feel so much bicep activation on it, but I feel a ton of lat. So my lats are definitely working and getting a training response. But I get a bicep uh, pump. Definitely getting a bicep pump from it. Then off the first set. So it works biceps very hard. And people forget that with curls. I mean, if we were to go by the data that's out there, if people are doing enough pulling for their back, they may not even get any training response from doing curls. They might not get any. Triceps seem to actually benefit more from direct work. And again, I've done plenty of curls in the past. You know, it's like, I hate it when people come in and say, well, you're not doing curls right now. That's why you don't have massive arms. My arms are probably bigger than yours. 
just throwing that out there. I know what my measure is. I'm not going to get into that. My torso is big. But I've done countless amounts of curls. It's not like you guys haven't seen me do thousands of reps of curls on camera over the years. So I do do curls. I'm just taking them out for now. Oh, and a side note. Um, yes, I'm not using a deadlift bar today. People are like, I thought you were doing that to toughen up your hands. I'm going to deadlift tomorrow. With the deadlift bar, I don't want to rip my hands up at all. I've been using it on the rows to toughen my hands for the deadlift bar for deadlift day. Because otherwise, my hands aren't going to be tough enough. But I want to have good, fresh skin to pull for a, a training max tomorrow on the deadlift with that bar. So I want my hands fully healed up and the skin to be in good shape when we do that. That's something that needs to happen so that, you know, it doesn't become an issue so that I don't tear my hands. And I've been good on that lately, right? My last few deadlift sessions, I have not torn my hands at all. So that's working. So then we also did our snatch grip hang pulls. And I'm bringing the hands in just a hair more. I my, Basically, my pointer fingers are on the bench rings, not the snatch rings. Because here's what's happening. Even with the, when I strap up, even using the figure eights, when I grip it all the way out to a snatch grip for the rep work, it eventually slides and my hands slide in and then it starts to it starts to really get uncomfortable on the hands themselves. Okay, and it tends to rub my hands the wrong way. And so if I have any blister from the rowing starting, it, it tends to start tearing those blisters because it's jerking the hand against it. Uh, even with the straps. So I'm finding just keeping it in in that spot for the full set is impossible. So what I'm doing is I'm just taking it to the spot that it slides to by default, the widest grip that, that it slides to, even with the straps during the work sets and doing it. And it feels great. I feel my entire shoulder girdle, we're good. Because that is why we do this, this. We do it to build the upper back and to build the delts. This is my main side delt trap, upper trap exercise. And it's not to say those things don't get hit by the other lifts. I do enough rowing for my back that hits side delts. Okay, anyone who doesn't realize side delts do get hit some on all that close grip benching and pressing and stuff. It, it does. It's not ideal. But this hits them more directly. Same thing with the upper traps. So we're making sure we get those areas and we're also getting an explosive component. Same thing, we can talk about eccentric work. Uh, and again, people are like, man, you cover some deep training topics in these. Absolutely. Everything I'm doing here is eccentric based training on this back half. All the time you hear bodybuilders and goofy people say, well, eccentric, there's research on eccentric reps and hypertrophy. And then they go do a slow eccentric rep. I'm like, you have not read any research. If you think doing a four second eccentric is eccentric training, you have ignored the last 30 years of research on hypertrophy and eccentrics. You ignored it. These hang pulls would be what, what the research says by eccentric reps. Why? I can't lift this weight strictly. I have to use the, the hang pull to do it. Right? I'm using leg drive. I can't lift this weight strictly. I can't do an upright row with this weight. It's more than my one rep max. When you exceed your one rep max and then have to handle the eccentric rep, okay, that's where you see the hypertrophy occurring in those studies. Slow eccentrics have never produced great growth in studies. Nothing. They've never added anything beyond a normal eccentric. Okay? In study after study after study after study after study, they're useless. That's not what we mean by eccentric training. The fact that well, in the eccentric training does it when they have a machine lift it and it's heavier than your max and then you have to fight against it on the way down. The, the actual overload from it. Well, that's what we're getting on that hang pull. My delts and traps are getting overloaded with 50 eccentric reps that's heavier than what I could max out on a strict upright row. It's 185 pounds. I can't do that with a clean, pretty upright row. Maybe I could. I don't know. I've never tried. That might be my one rep max. Who knows? But because they're having to handle the, the catching it, we create an eccentric response. In addition to the fact that we're, we're training for power, we're getting power training in. But this is, this is again, going to give a hypertrophic response. Just like with the delts here, the fast reps with the bands create an overspeed eccentric. Overspeed eccentrics like this cause more micro tearing. 
You see where we're going with this? So the nature of this, it's, it's we're getting all the uh, connective tissue benefits from the band work, but we are creating that overspeed response. It's why we can still get some good hypertrophy out of it. Right, because I'm snapped back instantaneously. The weight snaps back instantaneously at the lockout. It's like a, a, so fast. It creates an overspeed effect on the eccentric. That amplifies the eccentric response. So again, if you talk about eccentric training, overspeed work against bands would be eccentric training. Right, and then we get a stretch reflex out of it to increase our power. So we should be increasing tricep power with all of that, not just the tendon thickness. But yeah, 10 sets of those. That ended up being over 600 reps. And I think I didn't quite get 60 on the last one, but I hit 70 on like a couple of them, I think. I start losing count. So I still hit over 600 reps of these. That's a lot of work. All right, guys, but that's really all I have to say on that today. I hope it's been informative, and I will talk to you guys next time.